Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asian Newsline. I'm Lipakshi Kurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Tuesday, the 24th of September. Indian Prime Minister Modi meets world leaders on sidelines of UNGA. US President Trump reiterates offer to mediate Kashmir issue. And violence and fraud overshadow upcoming Afghan presidential poll. And now for all the details, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi met world leaders in New York on Monday on the sidelines of the United Nations General Assembly. He also attended the UN Climate Summit and said India was committed to increase renewable energy capacity. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi held talks with world leaders in New York on Monday on the margins of the United Nations General Assembly this week. Modi met Maldivian President Ibrahim Mohamed Soli and discussed progress on development partnership and cooperation in climate change. During his meeting with his Italian counterpart Giuseppe Conte, he discussed strengthening ties especially in trade and investment and to enhance cooperation in defence sector. He also met the ruling Amir of Qatar, Sheikh Tamim Bil Hamad Al Thani, and discussed a range of bilateral issues. Earlier in the day, the Indian Thank Prime Minister you. attended United Nations I Climate Summit in New York, where he said India was committed to increase renewable energy capacity and urged world leaders to bring about global behavioral change to tackle climate crisis. We believe that an ounce of practice is worth more than a ton of preaching. Hum Bharat mein ke fuel mix mein non-fossil fuel ke hisse dari badha rahe hain. Hum 2022 tak renewable energy mein apni capacity ko 175 gigawatt tak le ja rahe hain aur aage hum ise 450 gigawatt tak le jane ke liye prathibad hai. Modi also attended the high-level meeting of universal health coverage in the United Nations and highlighted that New Delhi was working on a mission mode to end tuberculosis in the country by the year 2025. He also outlined India's latest ban on electronic cigarettes. Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan on Monday met U.S. President Donald Trump in New York on the sidelines of the 74th session of the U.N. General Assembly. President Trump, during the meeting, renewed his will to mediate between India and Pakistan over the Kashmir issue. Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan met U.S. President Donald Trump on Monday in New York during a sideline event of the 74th session of the United Nations General Assembly. Trump, during the meeting, reiterated to Khan in presence of reporters that he would be willing to mediate between India and Pakistan over the Kashmir issue. Trump renewed his offer of arbitration for the third time, saying if both Imran Khan and Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi will want him to mediate an agreement between them, he is ready, willing and able. I have a very good relationship with Prime Minister Modi. I have a very good relationship with Prime Minister Khan. And if at any time they say, you know, we have some points that we think we can maybe iron out, I think I'd be an extremely good arbitrator. I've done it before, believe it or not, and I've never failed as an arbitrator. I've been asked to arbitrate. This was the second meeting between Khan and Trump within a month and came a day after the U.S. President and Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi shared their stage during a huge public gathering in Houston, where Trump emphasized the U.S. stand to free the world of radical Islamic terrorism. Modi also launched into a strong indirect attack on Pakistan, saying it supports terror and harbors terrorists. Pakistan police have detained 20 suspects as they investigate the possibility of a serial killer being behind the suspected murder and sexual assault of three boys. The bodies of three missing children were found in eastern Kasur district, which has seen numerous cases of child abuse and abductions in recent years. 
Child abuse is unfortunately a common occurrence in Pakistan which tries to cover itself under the guise of religion. Though shocking and sad that pedophilia or child abuse is rampant in Pakistani society, now grief, fear and anger have enveloped the town of Chunia in Pakistan's eastern Punjab province after the bodies of three missing children were found in Kasur district which has a history of child abuse and abduction. The body of 8-year-old Muhammad Faizan was found on an industrial estate last week after he went missing on the way home from nearby shops. The remains of two more boys were found nearby. Police have detained 20 suspects and their DNA samples have been sent for testing. Faizan's mother says she prayed for years to have a son and wants justice. Child rights advocates say Pakistan has a serious problem with child abuse. Meanwhile, police is continuing to investigate the suspected murders and disappearances and are looking into the possibility of a serial killer. Prime Minister Imran Khan has vowed a shake-up of law enforcement in Kasur and an investigation. With the Afghan presidential election only days away, fears of violence and the poll being vulnerable to fraud are growing. The poll comes as peace talks have collapsed and the Taliban has vowed to disrupt the election. Afghans are all set to head to polls on Saturday to choose the country's new leader. However, fears of violence and the poll being vulnerable to fraud are growing. Though election officials have said preparations are well in hand, security worries could lead many to stay at home, potentially undermining the legitimacy of the eventual winner if turnout is too low. The Taliban, on the other hand, have made no secret of their aim of disrupting the election which will witness 18 candidates, including incumbent President Ashraf Ghani, compete each other. A deadly suicide bombing last week near an election rally in central Afghanistan, where President Ghani was due to speak, came as a sharp reminder of the risks to a ballot that has been twice delayed in the shadow of failed peace talks. We are fully committed and ready for the 28th of September, a milestone in our history. Our message is very clear to our people across the country. We are responsible for a safe and sound environment for our people across the country to come and vote. Marred by accusations of massive fraud on both sides, the 2014 vote had left no clear winner obliging the United States to step in and broker a deal that saw Ghani and his long-term rival Abdullah Abdullah form an unwieldy national unity government. The presidential candidates, including Ghani and Abdullah Abdullah, now serving as the country's chief executive, have urged people to cast their vote to defeat the Taliban agenda of circumventing the democratic process. Female table tennis players are defying fear to chase champion dreams in mostly conservative and patriarchal Afghanistan, where it is difficult for girls to ignore the traditional customs and leave home to play sports. In conservative and patriarchal Afghanistan, it has been difficult for girls to ignore the traditional customs and leave home to play sports. However, some like-minded and ambitious girls in northern Juazdan province are defying fear and security concerns to promote sports for women in the traditional society. Juazdan province with Shibargan as its capital has been regarded as the relatively troubled province as Taliban militants are operational in parts of the country. Wearing sports care, these girls have been playing table tennis for years with the dream to earn the title of champion and bring accolades for the country.
Afghan youngsters, including girls, have made considerable achievements in sports over the past 18 years following the collapse of the Taliban reign in late 2001. Afghan athletes have won medals at both regional and international competitions, including at the Beijing 2008 and London 2012 Olympic Games. In news from Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka has launched the country's first ever 3D printing unit to design and produce artificial body parts in the island nation. Until the installation of the new unit, all artificial body parts were made using a plaster of Paris mold. Sri Lanka's Health Ministry has launched the country's first ever 3D printing unit to design and produce artificial body parts in the island nation. The unit was opened at the Colombo National Hospital last week. The 3D unit includes state-of-the-art technology introduced by the World Health Organization or WHO. In addition to the artificial limbs and other body parts, the 3D printer can also design and manufacture other medical equipment. According to the Health Ministry, until the installation of this new unit, all artificial body parts in the National Hospital were made using a plaster of Paris mold since 1950. The new 3D printer will take only four hours to design and produce an artificial body part. Death toll due to dengue fever in Nepal climbed to at least just seven on Monday. The Himalayan nation has recorded over 7,500 cases of dengue since July this year, with the highest number of cases in capital Kathmandu. Over 10,000 people have been infected by dengue outbreak in Nepal, claiming at least seven lives till Monday. According to the Epidemiology and Disease Control Division, or EDCD, a total of 7,730 people are infected with dengue since July, whereas 3,424 were infected three months before the latest epidemic. According to EDCD, which has been updating the number of infected people, the highest dengue cases were recorded in Nepal's capital, Kathmandu. The latest toll came a week after Health Minister Upendra Yadav claimed it is not a health emergency while addressing the parliament and cited the old statistics about the infection. Yadav had claimed of progress in containing dengue outbreak through the surge and destroy operations. Dengue is a mosquito-borne viral infection causing a severe flu-like illness. It has emerged as a major health concern in recent years with a steep spike in developing countries, especially during monsoons. A cartoonist in southern India is on a mission attempting to make world record by creating the longest handwritten Quran, the religious text of Islam. He hopes to promote calligraphy with his proposed work. Indian cartoonist and Guinness record holder M. Dilif is on another Guinness mission with an attempt to create the world's longest handwritten Quran, the religious text of Islam. Dilif hopes to promote calligraphy with his proposed 1,000 meter long handwritten Quran, of which 300 meters was up on display at an exhibition in India's southern Tiruvananthapuram city last week. It took 10 hours of work daily for seven months for him to complete 300 meters of the canvas. The leaf hopes to complete the work in three years. Visitors who came to the exhibition held the pages of the Quran and happily posed for photographs. The Leaf already holds a Guinness World Record of creating the world's largest badminton racket in 2017, which measures in at 18 feet height and 6 feet width. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude, the top stories once again. Indian Prime Minister Modi meets world leaders on sidelines of UNGA. U.S. President Trump reiterates offer to mediate Kashmir issue. And violence and fraud overshadow upcoming Afghan presidential poll.
Now our viewers can watch the show on SaadeshiaNewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SaadeshiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at SaadeshiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.